Welcome to Edel TV and my name is Joseph Oduol. Today we have a Sing to Save concert and Sing to Save concert has been organized by the Vocals of Praise together with the Makongeni uh, Adventist Youth and also we have the church choir and uh, the church as a whole. And today we are, uh, the, the purpose for this concert is to help our brother Hilary who has been ailing for almost uh, six years for, since 2016 and now we are here today to help out in uh, bringing him back to his uh, normal life. Tunawashukuru sana wale ambao wamefika na wale ambao wame, wame, wameweza kufika kwenye uh, the, the collection that we had today and the only the purpose as to why we are here is to contribute and get uh, uh, get some medicines and also the motorist wheelchair. My name is Joseph Odol and I want to introduce you to Hilary himself who has been uh, in this condition for a very long time that I've just said na ako hapa na sisi maybe atuambie na atueleze kwamba hii uh, ishida alipata lini na ilifanyi kaje just in summary Hilary Karibu this is Adel TV and uh, people are going to watch and uh, maybe those people who are going to be touched with us with your story uh, watasaidia kwenye mchango ambao tunaendelea kufanya kwenye sing to save Hillary. Okay, thank you so much Shajo for giving me this chance to share my story with the rest of the people. First I'm um, Hilary Oino from Makongeni SD Church. Okay. Uh, and uh, about six years ago, uh, 2016, on the 29th April, we had a mission at the with the Makongeni uh, Church Choir. Uh, during this journey, it's been a long time, not easy, uh, but through faith, courage, and uh, uh, having good friends around me, I can say it's been a bit smooth and uh, I've been so much happy. Uh, today is a very big day in my life uh, because so many people came to assist in uh, getting my electric wheelchair, medication and to raise some funds which are uh, geared towards making that uh, to get what you want to ask this. Now I would like to say thank you so much for BOP, or, or rather VOP, for them that uh, the, the people who came up with the idea, and we are now in the journey of getting a wheelchair, uh, longer this bed and uh, raising funds. Uh, I would wish to welcome everybody who is willing to assist in this half and drive. At the end of the day, we are all going to be victors as we are going to achieve what we want. Uh, Santa Sana Mesquiza, uh, the short story that he has just summarized uh, about his life, Wakiwa uh, Pale Mission. And there's a mission that they went with the youths, um, uh, uh, the youths of Makongeni uh, Adventist Church, na Kapatikana Nashida Kamahe. Tunawambia wale ambao wanatizama, tafadhali, the pay bill number we are going to give you. Uh, and also, if you have anything, if you have anything, please just channel it to Mchanga. That is the pay bill that we are going to give you. And then to Saidiye Ndugu Hilary. Asante sana Ndugu Hilary uh, for the short story that you just, uh, you've just shared with us. I want to, there's a family, there's a family that has been helping Hilary for a very long time. I want to introduce you to the family that picked Hillary from his condition that he is, uh, he is right now. And uh, maybe just to ask a few questions and to hear about them, uh, we can introduce a mom, mom who, was, uh, uh, who has been helping Hillary. And uh, mom, karibu sana kwenye Edel TV. Na tumekuwa na Hillary na wewe ndio 
uh, umekuwa ukimsaidia uh, dangu apate uh, apatikani na shida uh, since 2016 right so i went to uh, okay how, how did it happen that you you picked Hillary and you decided to be with Hillary and take uh, like you took him like your son so uh, how, how did where, where did you get this heart or imoyo wa kusaidia thank you so much i really want to appreciate my name is mayaka jacqueline at the time of the accident i, with, I was with Hillary at uh, the crusade okay. Uh, I remember very well that time we were singing and unfortunately the power went off. So in the process as we were trying to fix because it was around 7.30 and being a remote area it was a little bit dark. So we, we had to wait for some few minutes as they uh, try to fix the electricity. So in that process we had seen the lorry carrying the chairs to the venue of the Sabbath where we were to crown the crusade. And then in within some few minutes, the same lorry came back again. And uh, at this time, it stopped at the crusade. But we didn't take like much interest to know why it, they stopped there. So after the lorry left, the pastor who was preaching uh, told us that we want to pray. So we stood, we, as he was praying, he mentioned that one of the youths was involved in a road accident. So after the prayers, so he explained that as they were taking the seats under the PA system to the venue, uh, the boy fell from the moving vehicle. So we prayed at that moment again. <clears throat> Being a medic, I said, I told some few ladies who were there, we cannot just fold our hands, we need to go to the hospital and see the extent of uh, the accident. So we left that place, we followed them to the hospital they had gone to. Uh, on reaching there, we were not allowed to get inside because it was past visiting time. So we really begged them that uh, we were the caregivers to the person who, who was involved in an accident. Uh, fortunately enough, they let us in after begging them for almost 30 minutes. So when we went inside, I could hear Hillary screaming, shouting, and calling my name. He was like, Jackie, I know you are here. Kindly need here, Jackie, and it's idea nitakufia hapa. So me, personally, I didn't know that boy. So I just pressed on. I went to the room, the, the emergency room. Uh, the doctor was uh, giving him some medication. So I was just at the feet. He kept on calling my name. And I told him, Hila, relax, I'm here now. So I can be a Jackie, Najo Nafanya Kazi Kenyata. Kindly save me. Usiniacha ni kufie hapa. So like, <clears throat> I told him, just be calm. Now that I'm here, everything will be okay. So. The doctor had already finished, he put a line on him, then he said now he's going to the wards. At that particular moment, uh, I, I just went to Hillary, I held his hands, but at the time I was at the feet, I was holding the feet. But it's like Hila could not feel anything. When we were praying, I really tried to tickle him so that he could feel my presence, I was there. But uh, I realized he could not feel anything. So as we finished praying, I went, to, I held his hands and I told him, Hila, be calm. I'm here, the doctors are here, we are trying to save you and it shall be well. But he kept insisting, take me to Kenyatta. So I told him, let them uh, do the first aid, then we'll now take you to Kenyatta. <clears throat> At that point, he was being taken to the ward, and uh, he was really in distress, he was talking so much. So I asked the doctor, uh, what is the problem, what is the injury? And then the doctor told me that I've just given him some analgesics, uh, sorry, painkillers, uh, so that we wait until tomorrow, then we take him for a, an X-ray. At that point, I just got annoyed. I was like, this is an accident victim. We've not known where he got injured because he had a bruise at the back of the head. 
and I was like, uh, we need an urgent CT scan so that we can tell uh, what type of injury it is. Uh, the doctor was, uh, I had to produce my, my ID, my identification uh, job card. So I told him, I work at Kenyatta Hospital and uh, I want to know uh, which diagnosis are you admitting him with. And okay, at that point he was scared. Then he told me to be sincere, the facility does not have uh, any x-ray machine, we do not do scans, I will wait until tomorrow then we take him to another hospital. So at that time I told him, no, we are not going to admit Hila, uh, we are going to another facility. We have a doctor in the church, she happens to come from uh, those sides of Mwea. So I called her that time, I asked if there is any other facility within Mwea where we can get a CT scan or maybe an x-ray for diagnosis. Then she referred me to a hospital known as Karira Nursing Home, yeah, Karira Mission Hospital. So we left that hospital, before we left, they were also adamant, like they never wanted to give us a discharge out. So at that time I had now to exercise now my, my role as a medic. So I told them I have a right to take my patient wherever I want to. So with all due respect, just discharge the patient, we go. Uh, the doctor went into hiding. We stayed there for uh, a whole hour waiting for him to write a referral. Mm -hmm. Like, I really wanted to know what did you give him, and uh, we get a document to go to an, another hospital. Anyway, eventually he wrote a, a discharge summary without rubber stamp. Uh, I think they were scared to, like, leave a rubber stamp because now they had not done anything basically for the patient. So we left uh, at that nursing home around 10 p.m. We headed to Carrera Nursing Home. It's not far from that place. So on reaching there, on examining the patient, uh, to be sincere, he could not feel like from the stomach going down. Because that adactarial is Shinda Kimdunga Sindano, but he could not feel anything. And Amulizona Skia Chochote, no. So to me, the reality was dawning like, uh, it's like it's a spinal injury and like he's paralyzed from the waist going down. So we went for an emergency CT scan. Uh, at that point, uh, they gave him another painkillers. Then uh, we agreed because it was now around four in the morning. The doctor was not in. So the radiologist who did the scan told us the results will be out probably by eight in the morning. So at that time we said, okay, let's at least go. Uh, we leave him to rest. By that time he was a little bit calm. Uh, Ali Choka. In fact, Ali Ongeatu sana the whole night. So to Katoka Hapo, to Kaenda, to come Taftia Chakula, to come feed. Uh, and he was all he was all like Jackie, you are not leaving me here. So Nikamwambia tu to Natoka Kidogo, to Ngwaja Daktari Akuja and then we are coming to see you. Alikwa Pia Mechoka. So I can promise me you are coming to take me from this place. I told him, yeah. So we left. We went back to our hostels. We freshen up then, we we get uh, back to the hospital. So we were reaching at uh, the hospitals around five in the morning. We went direct to the bathrooms, we changed again. By around 7.30, there's a group which was coming from Nairobi to crown the camp. They had already come. Our pastor was already al almost the, uh, uh, getting there. So we said, let's wait for pastor to come so that we can go together to the hospital. In that process, uh, the hospital called me. So they told me, Jackie, come to hospital. Uh, there's an emergency. So to me, I was like shocked. Because you know, when you're being called, there's an emergency and you left a patient, 
uh, without a clear diagnosis. It's like, could be there's something that uh, had happened, maybe he had internal injuries or anything like that. But I just prayed, we prayed, we were with some elders, with the choir members, uh, we said no, let's go to the hospital. Uh, we left, it was around 8 in the morning, to Kafika town, to Kapata Pasta Mefika, so we were many, we were around 10 people, we went to the hospital. On reaching there, uh, that was when now the fears were confirmed. Uh, Hillary had a spinal injury. So the doctor explained to us, we saw the scan, and uh, he said, unfortunately, in our facility, we are not able. We are not able to manage him. So unless maybe you take him to another facility. They were referring us to Embu Hospital. But I told the doctor, since we don't come from that place to Patiwe Referral Yakuza Kenyatta. So that's how we got a referral to Kenyatta. Uh, we, we hired an ambulance. Then we came to Kenyatta. We were getting at Kenyatta at 3 p.m. Uh, fortunately enough, I had communicated with the my staff at Kenyatta, so they knew I was coming with a patient and it was an emergency. So when we got to Kenyatta, the process was very smooth. Uh, we had so many friends helping me out. Uh, we did uh, another scan, we did an x-ray, we did uh, uh, blood tests. All that time Hila was just restless. He was just talking as we came all the way from where to Nairobi. So, Dr. Yakatuambia, there is nothing much that can be done because the fracture iko kwa C5 and C6, upper Juya Shingo. So, like, when he fell, he fell backwards. So, like, ni kama ligonga chini, kitu sharp, maybe kitu kama jiwe, and with that impact, so ikakrakisha the spinal cord. So Akatwambia, that is the injury, and uh, it's like he might be like that for some time, but maybe if there's anything that can be done to correct the situation, uh, the hospital will be able to tell us. So we got to Kenyatta, uh, we were admitted in the wards at around 8 p.m., uh, ward 6C. Uh, the doctor saw him the following morning and I was scheduled for an MRI. So we organized for that. We did an MRI after one week. Then uh, after the MRI, they said there was that uh, disconnection in the spinal cord. So it needs a plate to be inserted. Uh, we tried, the church tried to raise the 80,000. The plate costed 80,000. So we were able to raise that money on a Sabbath. Then we went uh, to theater. Uh, the plate was inserted. Dr. Akatwem, by that time, the paralysis was climbing up. Initially, it was at the lower abdomen going down. But by the time we were at Kenyatta, the paralysis had come up to the chest. So he got that disc, he could not do anything, like the arms could move, but he could not touch any, he could not hold anything because the grip was not there. So to Lika for two weeks at KNH. After that, we were discharged to Spinal Hospital for palliative care. So we stayed at Spinal for a period of seven months. Yeah, so we got discharged in December with the paralysis. Uh, in the contrary, by the time we were there, Hillary kept on telling me, Jackie, kindly promise me you'll never leave me. So like, I really felt that heaviness in the heart. I couldn't like, uh, I wasn't able to let him go because I knew he needed me the most. And like, he really got used to me so much because I really understood uh, how to take care of him. In that period he was at Spinal, I could, uh, I could alternate with uh, one member of this church, Pastor Joel, 
So because I'm working, Pastor Joel could go to the hospital over lunch time so that he could feed him. Uh, and I could go in the evening after work. At times when I get time and Joel is not available, I could create time and go over lunch time. So we, we stayed there, we came back home. Uh, Hila had a lot of pressure sores. I look on a bed sores by, by like they were really bad all over the body. So we really tried to struggle with them with the, the help of Dr. Josephine. To look at Nazishona, like Tunashona in a car, after a week, Niki could have fungua kuwasha the wound, Unapata Zimiachana. So, like, we start again afresh. And then, Sazingino Napata, Imeka, the dead skin, Ilenya Maya Black in a particular Napa wound. In wound management, uh, wound in Apokuana that black skin, it means it, it's not a healing, it's not a healing wound. Or maybe iki iki kwa na ile nyama ya white yenye haitoi blood, it's not a healing wound. So basically, I could cut kuchonga hiyo wound until it bled. Dio unayosha and then unadress. So the trend was like that. Like you search a today, after a week ukifungua unapata imefungu kati na imekati ka hizo uzi. Like nyama zimeoza, so to narudi point zero. Uh, I remember one night, I, I had already exhausted, like we bought all the materials for dressing and they were not working. So I remember that time I just, I, I was really feeling it. You know, like him, he cannot feel the pain. But now me, the person who is doing all that, unakata nyama ya mtu, you know, you are the one now feeling that pain. I really, I remember that night I cried. I told God, no. Could you subject me to drilling this wound every time? I, I, I think I'm tired. And uh, there's a doctor, Dr. Biribwa from uh, Uganda. Uh, this doctor really worked on the, on the wounds. So, kuna mahali, like at the sacro, alikuwa amefanyiwa grafting walikata nyama wakabandika hapo at least hiyo wound ka heal kidogo so akaniambia there is a better material for dressing maybe it can help uh, to heal the wounds so at that time i bought that uh, material they were really expensive we went we bought them then i prayed over the materials i told god no after this material, I'm not going to buy any other. So that night I came. As usual, nika chonga yo kidizo vidonda zote, nika zi clean. I inserted the dressing material inside, then nika funga kidonda. After one week, nikenda kutoa, there was a big change. Like, nika wana wound, uh, iko very clean, it's bleeding. Like na inanza ku, ku, de, ku depress kidogo. So, at least I was happy there is an improvement. Uh, I want to thank God. I, I trust and I believe that there is power in prayer. Because that time I saw God's uh, hand at work. Uh, within a period of like two months, the wounds were already so tiny. At least they were healing. And uh, by three months down the line, wounds is Elisha Kabisa. So, like, we managed uh, the wounds for a whole year. So, at least these are wounds is Ilipona. And I want to tell you that Hila has been free of wounds uh, till now. In regardless of his uh, situation, like from the beginning of uh, the COVID era, he's been lying on that bed like Hatoki. He's always there. The goodness with Hila, we did uh, palliative care. So, unapoangalia kwa nyumbake kuna kamba nimefunga pale, hizo kamba zinamsaidia to hold and then anajitan. So since the fingers cannot grip, he uses the palm.
ndio anashikilia if he wants to turn if he wants to sit up that's what he usually does so nikamwambia vile tufanye ndio to avoid bed so skuja he's been doing that uh, we are also using uh, catheters external catheters kusaidia because unajua urine nikitoka kwa bed then hapo ndio sasa napata hizo pressure sores so for the meantime uh, tunatumia hizo catheters and he knows in case he kichomoka maybe in the course of the day when I'm at work and maybe there's nobody there to return it although I've taught some few friends vile wanairudisha so kama hakuna mtu karibu I always tell him like just grab anything within your reach aiyeke hapo so that it can it can absorb the urine until nifike jioni yeah so basically we've been doing that and i can say so far so good we are doing well thank you ma'am we are taking a short commercial break and then we are coming back to uh, ask uh, dr jackie right from kenyatta hospital who has been so good who has been the mom to uh, ilari so we are coming back to ask about the family issues you know when you take somebody in this condition and kuna kuna zile kuna zile shida zinatokea kwenye familia we are taking a short commercial break then we are coming back to know how she has been cooperating with the family issues and Hillary's issues Thank you. This Hillary's concept, Sing to Save a Soul, and the soul that we are saving today is Hillary's soul that uh, we've uh, found the story. And I have, I have Jackie, uh, Dr. Jackie from Kenyatta Hospital, and he's a member of Makongeli SD Church who has been helping Hillary. She has been the guardian angel. She has been a mother. She has been helping Hillary in all the things. Uh, regardless of the condition that Hillary is in. So, mom, karibu sana. I want to I want to ask you about the family 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 issues. You know, when when you take somebody in this condition, you you have a baby, a, a husband, you know, you have a daughter, you have kids. So, how how did this how did uh, you manage to take Hillary in this condition and then you introduced to your to your better half? Yes, that I have a, I have a, I have a son adopted son who you whom you uh, utakuwa unasaidia sasa utuambie kuna changamoto ule ulipitia ulipochukua Hillary kama mtoto wako asante sana um, what i could what i can say there are so many challenges I, i really went through hell like the last journey has not been that smooth uh, when i took him in uh, First of all I'm married uh, I'm, I'm a married woman uh, and have two daughters but uh, things changed along the way so when we started this journey my husband could come and visit him in fact we could uh, alternate to whenever maybe he's on off duty he could also go visit he love feed him at some point uh, he la ali to lisa tukiwa si wote akatuambia promise me that you will take me to be your own son because like by that time his own family they they just came like once when we were at kenyatta when we called them after coming from where and then they stayed for like a week they went back home they came when we went to spinal they stayed uh, like for two weeks they went back home so like he really felt this is the family that he had that is me and my husband and uh, pastor joel so along the way uh, he could come wakati huo wakati hilali tuliza like will you take me like your own son Uh, and we agreed in fact he was the first one to say he love from today you are our first born so he was really happy and i told him hila as long as we are alive we'll always be there for you if we have anything that you need just talk to us like we'll be there for you uh, 
unfortunately as time went by uh, there was a disconnection like uh, there were issues you know like in any in any organization there has to be issues like I'm a Kisi, I'm married to a Luo, and then church issues, like it reached a time. Somebody questioned in a, in, in a good perspective, like, Mbona wa Kisi ndio wanashugulikia hila sana, yet wajaluo wako, but we are not like seeing them being that active. But unfortunately, some of them didn't take it lightly, they didn't take it like well. They felt like it was an insult. I came to learn about it from my my former husband. That when you mwambi ya kwamba, now kanya bibiako kumsaidia hila so that I talk a chane na yeye because it's like through her we are being like what one on anikama tu shubuliki hila. So nika ona mianza like hafurahi tena. And I knew why, why is it that you are really taking much of your time to shugulik hila? And I was like, I thought we agreed and this is what we've been doing, like nothing has really changed. This is what we agreed that we'll be taking care of him. And we always do that, like kila siku tukienda hapo lazima tumuone, feed. we do everything. When he got discharged from hospital, always was spinal in a patient home wow. but at this particular point hila i don't know why alikata aliniambia mom if i go home trust you me i will die na nilipopata accident sikukuwa home nilikuwa kwangu kwa nyumba yangu so if i will die wacha tu nikufie kwangu but i'm not going home so i asked him why are you saying you don't want to go home? And he was like, Mom, mamangu mzazi ni mze sana. To be sincere, mama ke ni mze. Like the parents are very old, he's the last born. So I can yambia, Mom, hawezi ni angalia. Nani atani valisha daipa? Nani atani feed? Nani atani ogesha? You know, uh, na hakuna mtu home. So I can yambia, siwezi. So it was a, like it was tough to make such a decision because the family had come na hila kawaambia siendi. Unfortunately, people de- didn't take it like positively like it's hila's word. He doesn't want to go home. So it turned up out like Jackie doesn't want hila to go home. Like amemkatalia. So na mimi because tulishaka na hila I understood him so much. And uh, having been in hospital for quite some time, I understand. When a patient tells you that they are not comfortable, and uh, to be sincere, ata mimi mwenyewe lazima tu, I couldn't be at peace. Like ni memorilis kuenda and then anything happens to him, then I could not have peace. So mi ni kawambia, let him make a decision. He's here, he's a grown up. Hospitali wakafanya conference tukiwa spinal and he told them uh, mimi siendi home. Tukakuja tukatafuta nyumba, tukapata nyumba, we paid for it, so we brought him here. So by that time my husband was like utaacha kwenda kwa hila. So nikamuuliza mbona? So nani atampikia, nani atamfeed? Ako na watu wao. But me I said okay, uh, siwezi muachilia. So I could sneak na toka naenda na mpelekea food na mfanyia kila kitu then narudi home. So ikakuwa like we had now issues on and off. You know it reached a point ilikuwa sasa imekuwa too much like hizo uh, challenges zilikuwa plus many more of which sitaweza kuongea kwa sasa. So ikafika mahali I remember it was on a Sunday morning. Uh, that time I used to come, we have a, a prayer band, Kanisani, so we could wake up at 6.30 in the morning for prayers. So that day, before, before I came to church, yale kwa nenda job. So me, I woke, up, I woke up, I prepared, I was coming to church. And then, akatoka, akafika inje, akanipigia simu. So me, I received. I thought maybe he's asking me, umerudi kulala maonenda maombi. So he told me, na nisikupate umeenda kwa hila nikamwambia ni sawa 
akaniambia kwanza leo utaniambia uh, ni bwana mgani unamtaka kama ni Hillary ama ni mimi nikanyamaza akakata simu after like 10 minutes he calls again nikamwambia i'm on my way now to church nenda maombi hata hiyo maombi usiende i said go back to the house so i asked him okay maombi nayo imefanya nini like mimi ndio mwenye nyumba sasa utanisikiza there is no going to church there is no going to Hillary's place just stay at home nikamwambia it's okay ninakaa home so ju, ju nilijua menda job mimi nikatoka tu i came to church i didn't know kuna watu kumba meka like spice so he was told nilikuwa nimekuja church akani call immediately akaniuliza i told you not to go to church umeenda so nani mwanaume kwa hii nyumba i didn't answer anything nikanyamaza akanitusia akaongea maneno mengi but i just said no i'll not respond back nikakata simu he kept calling akipiga sasa naeka tu like i receive it but not listen i put it there naiacha hapo nakuja napata tena like ilikatika tena amepiga so akipiga na receive na iacha tu hapo akipiga that's what i was doing so when he came back in the evening okay i talked to pastor and uh, our then chief elder so i told them the situation venye imekuwa and they were like hey, why could he behave like that so wakaniambia ni sawa wacha tungoje jioni when he came back in the evening like uh, nilikukataza usiende church we went so i told him no i really felt like i wanted to pray so to cut the story short ilifika tu mahali sasa akakuja point blank akaniambia now today i want you to choose uko na wanaume wawili so far you have Hillary and you have me so choose between the two by that time in fact kusema ugweni nilikuwa hata mimi nimechoka nimekasirika tu mpaka like najaribu kumvumilia at time there is a time i asked him so like when you telling me Hila is my husband like how so like you you feel we have an affair with him and he was like mbona basi unamshughulikia mbona basi yeye ndio umemshughulikia kuniliko so hiyo siku wakati aliniuliza hivyo nikamwambia thank you nimechagua Hillary so like hakuamini akaniuliza nimekwambia choose between me ama Hillary nikamwambia again and again if you ask me like more than 10 times my answer will still remain to be the same i choose Hillary so nikatoka nikakuja nikakuja church tukaongea na wazee juniliona sasa amefika mahali like he's now trying to like become violent so nikaona sitaki kuruhusu ifike hapo uh, when i talked to pastor pastor akaniambia no when it reaches that point uh, give him some space to on uh, how he behaves so i moved from the house nikatoka nikaenda kwa sorry nikaenda another place I stayed there for two weeks. Ah uh, hakushughulika so I said okay uh, now that he's not telling me anything wacha tu ni asiu. So ikafika mahali pastor wakamuita tukaja kanisani. Mbele ya pastor alisema the same thing. Alisema in fact before the pastors called us he came to report me. Akasema ya kwamba Hillary amenyanganya bibi. So pastor akamuuliza amekunyanganya bibi kiaje? Akamwambia my wife spends time with Hillary more than he spends time with me. So pastor akamuuliza you know when you talk of kunyanganywa wife it's like it's either he's now the one supporting her financially or maybe do they have any intimate relationship so pastor akakuwa tu uh, frank na akamuuliza like do they have a sexual affair with your your wife akasema mimi na shuko so uh, pastor akamuuliza i thought hillary was paralyzed akaniuliza Hillary ana function so to me i, I like told uh, pastor you know pastor knows him very well so akamuliza ule mtu mwenye amevalishwa paka catheter so how do you expect these things to happen 
akasema tu ni vile ana spend time na yeye so pastor akamwambia enda tu uombe jiombe sana because whatever you are saying hata Mungu hatawahi kusamehea because mtu mwenye anaweza kukunyanganya bibi ni mwenye anaweza fanya hizo vitu zote so nikaona imeleta issues mingi ikafika mahali now we could not like talk uh, things went out to be bad until Kakwatuni, we have a family meeting. In that meeting, still he couldn't listen. So, Nikamwambia, just give me a break. Like, let me go sort myself out. Go sort yourself out. Then we'll meet to an Kama tunaza reason. So that's how we separated in the year 2017 uh, to date. So like. He never came back to ask anything. He never, you know, he never communicated. He went ahead. He married after three months of separation. So, <clears throat> Pastor Katuita, Akatuliza, uh, like, you guys, what have you decided? So Akasema, Mimi, Nangoja tu Bibi aniambia meamuaje. So Akamuliza. Are you married ama you are not married? Akamwambia yes I married. So unataka bibi aongee nini na umeoa? So akamwambia nilioa so that I feel jealousy arudi. So pastor akamuliza do two wrongs make a right? Like mume separate then uh, umeleta bibi ndio arudi. So basically me I told pastor when kifika hapo no let him go on with his life. Me, I have no issue. Like, what a nikae tu kila mtu akaina life yake. So, basically, it happened like so. So, me, I went with my daughter Chantel. He was left with his daughter. So, he had one daughter. I had one daughter. So, to ka separate kila mtu akakana mtoto wake. So, that's how it happened to date. Thank you, ma'am. I, I don't know if uh, Chantel is around. I just wanted Chantel to come and uh, say hi. But if we can't, we can't access her or we can't find her. We just want to tell the listeners, the, the, the people who are watching us right now, that uh, it is a great, a great story. And wale ambao wa konyumbani. There is a, a point in Afrika mahali unaulizo chagua kati ya huyu na huyu. But because of God and because of the decision that uh, uh, Sister Jackie uh, decided on, she's the one who has been taking care of Hillary since uh, 2016 to date. And we want to say thank you. Uh, I can see Chantel around. Uh, we, can, we can just call her to say hi. Let me just introduce this beautiful family. This is the daughter to Jackie. She's called Chantel. And I just want to say that uh, it is a blessed, it is a blessing and it is a blessed family. A mother and a daughter separated because of uh, uh, the son, uh, the, the Hillary. Yeah? So, ni, ni shout out to people. This is Chantel, who has been doing all these things. In, in, in five minutes, Chantel, kindly, can you just narrate what you, you, you've been going through? Maybe you are, you are, you are age mates, you are, you are youth mates, what they have been talking about. Uh, I know they, are, they have to talk about you, right? So maybe just tell us what the challenges uh, have you been facing? No, the challenges have been there. Because sometimes I, I am going to school, currently I'm in college, so sometimes I need to go to school and I also have to take off Hillary to care of him. So it's been a challenge because I have to wake up in the morning, go check on him, then I go to school. And currently I'm doing my attachment. Still I'm also, in the morning I go and check on him, then on the evening when I'm coming from work, I still go and check on him. Yeah, mostly my friends want to take me out sometimes, but you can't get time since I have to stay with him. We don't want to leave him alone so that he can feel. We don't want him to feel he's alone. Yeah, we want to, to make him feel he's one of us. Do you, do, you regret, do you regret taking care of Hillary as your own brother? Now Hillary is your own brother, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you regret in taking care of him? No, I've never regretted. Actually, I believe it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
Chantel is a, is a young lady who is just uh, doing the, the attachment and now she's uh, studying, she's a student and has been taking care of Hilary. Just to tell you that uh, Hilary cannot, uh, the mother said that the, the diapers has, uh, has to be changed so the only person who does that is either the mom or Chantel. To the youths out there, this is a young lady taking care of this guy. And it is a blessing. She has just said it is not a regret that uh, she has, uh, uh, she's taking care of Hillary. And I want to say that thank you very much, Mungu Zidi Kwabariki, Chantel, and uh, Sister Jackie, the, 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 the family who has been there for Hillary since 2016 till today. God bless you. May God bless you. And we are praying for Hillary to stand up again and walk again. And uh, trust me, these are blessings to the family. And I know, I know you've been, uh, maybe the friends have been, wamekuwakeongea vibaya, kuhusu hii kitu yote mlefanya, ama hii kitu yote mnafanya. Lakini mungu yupo, natusimama imara. Asante ni sana, asante sana kukuja kwa Edel TV. God bless you. Thank you very much, thank you very much for joining us and watching this true story. It is a true story for Hillary. And it is a true story from the parent, uh, parent uh, sister Jackie, the mom who has taken uh, care of Hillary since 2016. And it is a true story that we've listened uh, from Chantel, a young lady. It is a, it, uh, a young lady who has been taking care of Hillary since 2016, changing the diapers, doing everything, washing him. It is something that we as Christians to nafaa uh, to angalie na kiundani. This Edel TV reporting live from Nairobi. Joseph Fudol is my name.